Good morning. I'm actually doing today's video based on links from a mainstream media, CNN, <laughs> report called The Power of per Perceptions, Imagining the Reality You Want by Amanda Anayati, a special to CNN. The title that I've selected for my talk is 2012, Perception Depends on Context. And I'm going to start off with some quotations from that article that I mentioned at the onset. Quote, Either there are no illusions, or everything is an illusion, said neuroscientist and artist Bo Lato at the conclusion of his remarks at the recent Being Human 2012 conference. And given, this is continuing the quote, and given that we are pretty much all delusional, you might as well choose your delusion. Another quote from that same article, the brain did not evolve to see the world the way it really is. We can't, Lotto says. We can't help but to see things according to history, our own history and that of our ancestors, because we are defined by ecology, not by our biology, not by our DNA, but by our history of interactions. And I actually watched the video that was linked from that article, and I recommended it to my friends on Facebook with this notation. What is real? This video to me proves the point that the more we know, the less certain we can be about anything. Certainty perhaps really is the indication of one's ignorance. Ponder that after watching this fascinating video. And I provide the link, the links both to the article and to the video that I'm referring to in that quote. But after I watched the video yesterday, which of course came after reading the article from on CNN. I continued to ponder it and I and pondering it into the morning. Because as a younger man, I thought I pretty much knew what objectivity was. I knew what the truth was. After all, I had been told the truth. I had been fed <laughs> my fundamentalist Christian truths as a young man. Some of them did not make sense, and I rebelled against some of them, honestly. But not, not as much as some people do, because I stayed in the church. But I questioned, and I continued to question. And after watching reading things like I read and watching videos like this, I'm, as I said, more convinced than ever that I, the only way that I can live my life is with a lot of grace and a lot of compassion for myself. And when I give it to me, I automatically give it to others. The grace that I bestow upon me in allowing myself to entertain the idea that I know anything at all, anything. I allow others the same grace because we are all products of what we have experienced. And I haven't experienced what you have, neither have you experienced what I have.
So if we enter into an argument over who's right, it's an argument from a point of ignorance. All arguments, all arguments are virtually from a place of ignorance. Yesterday we talked about communication, basically compassionate communication, or complementary or critical communication. Because each of us thinks that what we're perceiving as reality is real. Well, it is, but it's not the whole story because we don't know what the other person that we're looking at is experiencing. Mr. Lotto pointed out the significance of determining what color something is. Now you can put two items of the same color on a white background and nobody would disagree what color you're looking at because it's obvious. But you put a different background behind each color object, color dot, and the color literally changes based on the colors around it even though it didn't change. Same is true of shapes. On our perception of shapes, he showed lots of optical illusions in the video. Lots of optical illusions. And not just optical, but how we hear something and where we think the sound is coming from. It all depends on the circumstances through which we are perceiving it. Now, if, if that doesn't give you pause when you see something like that and say, wait a minute, I thought I was right and I've been arguing with all these people trying to prove them wrong. All my life I've been trying to say that, that my religion is the right way or my scientific uh, dogma is the correct way of perceiving the world. It's the only way that you can look at things, folks. I mean, why don't you get it? Why can't you get it through your head? This is the reality. This is the truth. And then you watch a video like that one that I watched. And you have more knowledge, more information. And you realize that you're only perceiving it from your own point of view. From the experience you have, from what you've been taught is true and you've bought into the matrix, the illusion of the matrix. And it doesn't matter what it is, but the matrix has pitted us one against another in a false battle that is based on everybody's ignorance. Because if we weren't ignorant, if we understood that it's all perception, we wouldn't be fighting with each other and we wouldn't be holding so tightly onto what we think is true. I listened to another short video yesterday of a lady. It comes to mind. She was part of the elite. She, she realizes she was raised in an elite family. And she went on what I've heard many others say, that the trauma that the elite put their children through so as to warp their sensibilities. How is a sociopath or a psychopath born? They're not born by nature that way. They're created by their environment that way. They're, it's an induced, an induced psych, psycho, psychopathy. I, I don't think that that's the correct way to say that word. Psychop an insanity. We are trained to be insane and to question many of us, those of us that have been abused. We're trained what is real. We are, fear is actually inculcated within our very consciousness so that we perceive everything as somebody's out to get us, a paranoia. And we compartmentalize. 
our definition of reality so that we have different realities or multiple personalities they're called we as humans are so phenomenally complex because we've created that complexity through the freedom of choice how far down the rabbit hole are you willing to go which pill are you going to take how much are you willing to see the more you're willing you and me and all of us the more we are willing to explore reality and realize that it's contextual the more compassionate we're able to be the more loving we are able to be the more understanding we are able to be that's how we can forgive the Illuminati that's how we can forgive the so-called demons somebody sent me another video yesterday from a Muslim and, a, and the point of view of the of the Quran that extraterrestrials are demons from hell that's a perception there are many Christians that hold a similar perception and I watched part of that video and he was quoting from the Quran about what's inside of us I don't remember the exact quotes now but there were a couple of verses that he keyed everything in on these are perceptions so I'm not saying that that's wrong not from his perception it certainly isn't but not everyone is going to be standing in those shoes looking at it through those lenses and when we change the lenses that we're looking through or there was a head a helmet that he put on in one that Otto put on in one of the demonstrations he put the helmet on the guy blindfolded him put the helmet on so that it distorted where the sound was coming from so what he was hearing with this ear was coming from over there and vice versa so which side of the audience is clapping he was asked and he'd point the opposite direction because the helmet switched his hearing so that everything was distorted it was even where am where is my voice coming and he says it's coming from behind me when it was obvious to everyone that was that had that was looking at the image they were seeing it right in front of them and david david ike tells about the the hypnotist that convinced this person that when when you come back when when you come out of your hypnotic thing when i bring you bring you back you you're not going to see your daughter in the room and then he brought his daughter to stand right in front of him held a watch behind her back and said what time is it and he says why it's and he could read the watch through his daughter because he had already his mind had already been tricked that she wasn't there he saw right through her body you say Ron how can these things be it doesn't make sense it does if you have an open mind and more especially an open heart everything is an illusion or nothing is nothing is now I do believe that nothing is an illusion except separation I've said that many times the physical world is illusory because it's not permanent but it's only perceptions of reality in that sense it's all an illusion but it's real experience and that's always been my point and all of the real experience we have in playing in the illusion from my point of view <laughs> is to teach us compassion to teach us to love one another to listen to each other so that we can learn now the other part of that video talked about phantom limbs and it's most fascinating I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it but the scientific studies that have been done on amputees that have lost limbs and some of the crazy sensations which that was what the movie was about perceptions and sensations that segment of from the uh, 
Being Human 2012 conference. Perceptions and sensations. How can a limb that's not there feel? But it does. But it does. Does that make sense to the rational mind? Mm -mm. Unless you've expanded the rational mind beyond what is obvious. Because so many things in our world are not obvious. Extraterrestrials, are they demons or are they angels? Depends on where you're standing. I happen to believe, because I've chosen to, that we live in a world, in a universe rather, that is on our side. A universe based on love and not fear. Nevertheless, we have grown up and formed our opinions, our truths of reality, our perceptions of reality. We have formed them in a world where fear, the exact opposite of what the universe has in store, a world that is the opposite of that. We've gone into the far country as prodigal sons and daughters of a loving and living God. And we've had the experience of separation. It is a lie. We've never been separated from God's love, nor could we ever be, nor can we ever be. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's a belief. And it's a belief that resonates within me. If you have been raised in fear, that belief is not going to make sense to you. But I ask you to at least be open-minded enough to allow entry of that light into what you don't even see as darkness. And yet you will. As you open up more and more, we are able to perceive our own ignorance. And the more ignorance we're able to perceive, the more compassionate we're able to be toward ourselves and toward one another. Think on these things. Ponder them. Meditate about them. Contemplate how you're going to respond to information that shows you that you don't have all the answers. You're not quite as smart as you thought you were. Your truths are only perceptions based on your experience and your history and the knowledge that has been made conscious to you. But most knowledge has not been made conscious to us which is why I say, keep an open mind and more importantly, an open heart, knowing that all perception of reality depends on the context from which you're observing it. Namaste. I appreciate you listening.